Hello everyone, I'm James Milan and this is Talk of the Town. Uh, uh, for today, we are in a familiar locale. If you've watched Talk of the Town before, you might have seen this interior for some other things that we've done. Um, and yes, we are at the Roasted Granola, a gem of Arlington Heights as far as we are concerned. And I am joined by one of the two owners, Emily Patel, is in California, but Sarah Short is here with us today. Hi, James. I'm so glad that you are here. Thank and you. And I am also joined by Lydia Kennig Scher, who is a, a an artist, the founder of Art Links, which we will find out more about, um, and a a commissioner on the Arlington. Uh, Ar Arlington Commission of Arts and Commission Culture. Commission of Arts and Culture, ACAC, <laughs> of course. Thanks for that help, Lydia. So anyway, thanks both of you for being here. Let me just explain that we're, we're, we're going to talk about today is really the kind of intersection of art and creativity on the one hand and a little bit of commerce on the other hand in terms of this being a business, of course, but really how creativity suffuses this business from out here where we can see the paintings and we can see the windows and uh but also back in the kitchen and right back to the origins so i'd like to start with the origins if that's okay, okay. Great. uh this space where we're in right now was a place called art lounge before it, it was roasted granola tell us a little bit uh first of all about art lounge lydia because i know you were involved mm -hmm. and then about how roasted granola came about Art Lounge was a, essentially a sip and paint business, which means that uh, someone came and had 16 by 20 canvases and something on the walls that there was a stage there. And, and uh, it really was a night business. Uh, it hap everything happens every night. Nothing happened during the day. And there was a bar with, with some uh, goodies, desserts and appetizers. And then people came every night of the week to do some kind of a three hour event. Um, I became an artist in residence, and as such, I helped them do marketing, and I also helped create courses so that doing earlier before the sip and paint started or on the nights where at 7 o'clock, I think it was, so we have also art classes. Mm -hmm. So myself and other people taught to the community a little different than just sip and paint. It, it, it taught more, um, more just creativity without looking at something to paint. Mm -hmm. And so it was sort of the beginning of what I call painting from the heart, so that people could paint intuitively. So I was the artist in residence, as I said. That was the teaching, promoting, all that stuff. And then one day, I had the pleasure of meet uh, Sarah and Emily, and they started with their granola business, and started by giving us little tidbits uh, when, when there was a class or there was a, a, a painting by night, um, and boy, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I was bought then. <laughs> <laughs> you were right. You sold right away. Um, yeah. So I mean, it, it's true that right. Rose Granola came into being while Art Lounge was still here. So just explain how this this happened from your perspective. Yeah. So we started the Rose to Granola business. I think this fall it'll be ten years ago. Wow. Uh, we started out of Emily's kitchen. And uh, we started going to farmers markets, and we consider ourselves artisan, you know, food makers. Um, and we sort of outgrew Emily's kitchen. We baked for a couple of years in a in a bakery, a private bakery, five thousand square feet. It mm. was a dream. And that bakery eventually expanded, and we weren't going to be able to use the space. And so we were looking for space. Um, and we had heard that you know the art lounge was mostly evening events and that there was a kitchen mm -hmm. and uh, that was underutilized. So mm -hmm. we, you know, we talked to the owners of the art, of the art lounge and uh, moved our business in here just initially thinking that we'd bake granola. And then we thought, you know, uh, here we are in, in Mass, on Mass Ave in, in Arlington and, and I live right up the street and we thought, you know, we should have a little coffee house. There's really nothing down mm -hmm. here. And so that's basically how we started the coffee house. So we first started producing granola and then we sort of built out a little uh, coffee bar and we shared, you know, the space with the art lounge. Mm -hmm. And um, when the art lounge left, uh, just before the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, we started having uh, art exhibits on the wall. Um, and, and then when the art lounge left, of course, 
a few months later, there was the pandemic and, and we shut down. And when we, when we reopened, we you know, kind of imagined um, ourselves still being connected to the arts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we really liked that connection. And uh, we continued with the art exhibits and started bringing in local artisans uh, cards. I think actually handmade cards was our first thing that we brought in. Mm -hmm. And then pottery. We have two lovely potters that sell their mm -hmm. pottery here. And then we expanded to, we have uh, felted hats and um, tea towels and, you know, right. all sorts of, kind of, of things. Yeah. Right. Running yeah. the gamut. Exactly. And we still like to um, have local uh, food sources also. Uh, we get eggs. Um, indirectly from farm to door direct. They provide farm fresh eggs of, uh, from Lilac Hedge and we used to be neighbors with them at farmers markets. Uh, we sell local honey uh, from Carlisle Honey. Uh, we use their honey in our granola. Um, the owner of Carlisle Honey is also my bee mentor. I'm a beekeeper. Mm -hmm. uh, we use uh, maple syrup from Ackerman Farm in Cabot, Vermont. They still you know, bring the, deliver the maple syrup to us. It's another partner from farmers markets and we use that in our maple syrup. Um, so even as we've expanded in our, our granola, we make a lot of granola, it's still important to us to use local products when we can. Yeah. Uh, we use Greek olive oil in our granola and uh, we, our first person, uh, first business that sold our granola was Sophia's Greek Pantry in Belmont. Mm -hmm. And we still use Greek olive oil in all of our granola because the olive oil was, you know, from her family's estate in Greece. So. And this is, I mean, this is really what we are yeah. here to be talking about today is that all, all of these, all of this interweaving that happens yeah. mm -hmm. between roasted granola and the community in a yeah. number of different ways, especially yeah. again, the arts community. Lydia, you really were the driver for this particular episode, uh, you know, when you kind of reached out and said, you know, I really want to let people know about Roasted Granola as this kind of engine, this hub of creativity and of art and, you know, promotion of the arts. Um, tell us a little bit more about like what it is that you see is so special about this place in that way. Well, one of the things is that I, in addition to the commissioner, I am a founder of ArtLinks, which is a networking organization. Uh, that does uh, uh, advocacy su in support for artists. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I've known Sarah since the days of Artlands, as I said, and, and I was sold them their food. Um, and then uh, about two years ago, we were looking, Artlinks were looking for um, a place to do a holiday market. So that's how I approached Sarah, who knew me, and said, well, that sounds like a good idea. And from that evolved into uh, having a gallery for art links and in other words in order to exhibit on the walls you have to become a member and that is because art links is a part of the Arlington Commission of Arts and Culture we don't collect dues so my job is to make sure that the artists of all persuasions have a place to perform or exhibit mm -hmm. so I talked to Sarah and Emily and we decided that because it is doable we, we have a changing exhibit every three months and what I think I mentioned to you that I like about the roasted granola is that because I've seen how they create their, their artisan foods, uh, it has a, such an incredible synergy with how artists create. And so in a way, is a creative way of doing business, is a creative way of working on the business and that attracts creativity, which we normally see through the art, like in the ongoing exhibit. Mm -hmm. But when you look at their business model, as, as Sarah aptly put it, they create all the time. They, 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 it's just, it's very organic. In other words, yeah, I'm sure they have a business plan, but if things happen because they're so open to bringing community, artists, uh, in their own creative spirit. Um, I, I'm sure it comes from the family too, because when I was teaching a class here, their mother was taking my class and the sisters. So there's a family of artists. And, and what art brings to a business is a quality that is not found with anything else. It's the idea, it's a subtle, underlying, intuitive idea of being open to what is, it's being creative. And so not just, you don't have to be an artist to be creative, but 
But creativity should permeate every part of your life because then we become better individuals, a better society, a more inclusive society. Yes, for sure. And Does that answer what you're asking? Absolutely, um, in, in large part. And I, yeah, I want to just um, reinforce what it is that you're saying, which is that art as we are thinking about it today and creativity as we're talking about it, it depends on openness, right? It depends on tolerance and an and expansive idea of what people have to offer, right? And it, it, it runs completely counter to that kind of narrowing and closing, mm -hmm. which all of us seek to avoid as much as we can. And we do as a community, the way Arlington likes to think about itself, certainly is well reflected here at Roasted yeah. Granola. Um, because again, there is that sense of inclusion. There is that sense of uh, celebration of mm -hmm. what particular creativity each individual can bring mm -hmm. to it. Um, coming out of that little monologue, I apologize for talking for a while. Let me ask you, though, to give concrete form to something Lydia was just referencing, and that is, um, as you guys started this business, you made granola. You've expanded that menu quite a bit. Um, and also, I'm sure the granola itself has evolved over time. Give us a little, just a little flavor of how cre the creativity that, that Lydia's, you know, has talked about kind of makes its way through your, you know, your process of developing the menu, making your decisions, et cetera. With granola or, or, or the whole no, menu? No, <laughs> well, well, you know, wherever, guess, you, however much well, you Well, it, you know, I guess it is a process over time. You know, we started out with just one granola and it's still called our original granola because it was the only granola we had. Um, and, you know, when you first start out with a small business, especially, I'm going to say especially but granola, but it could be anything. Many people said, you can't go into business selling granola. That's a saturated <laughs> market. And then other people we talked to said, no, there's always room for a quality product. And so, you know, we... We, we always made granola at home. And um, so it was Emily who really started the idea of um, doing the granola business. And so that process was, um, I guess it really did come from many years of just making granola. Of course, it, it, it changes when suddenly you're selling it. Mm -hmm. And, and um, people will still ask me today, this is a side thing, so do you still like making granola? I love the process of making granola. I actually find it almost therapeutic. And I'm not the one ba doing all the baking now. I used to do the majority of the baking, but just using high quality ingredients. Emily and I spent so much time finding um, quality ingredients um, and just mixing them together. It was a lot of, you know, trial and error on, on flavors. Uh, you know, we then uh, went from meeting Ackerman Farm at the farmer's market, we said, hey, could, would you have enough maple syrup to sell to us if we wanted to start, you know, making a maple pecan granola? And, um, well, we spent so much time tasting batch after batch. Is this the right amount of maple oh, syrup? That you sounds know? rough. <laughs> 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 because we try to have this balance where we, we like a nice roast on our granola. And a lot of people say, well, what does that mean that your granola is roasted versus being just baked in the oven? Well, it's just really baked in the oven, but roasting is really a, a dry process. Mm -hmm. And we like to get that flavor when you roast an almond or a pecan. It really, I mean, a pecan roasted by itself almost tastes like it has maple in it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, there's a sweet, right, right. Yeah, there's just this, this nice uh, flavor that comes out. So we sort of enhance, we like to enhance the flavor of our product without covering it in you know sugar or things like that so that balance of what's the minimum amount of sweetness to make it really you know taste flavorful mm -hmm. um, has been very important to us i think um you know I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna claim that we're the lowest on the market with sweetness or salt or, mm -hmm. or anything like that but we try to be mm -hmm. you know we try to be very aware of it. and a lot of customers uh, have asked us oh could you make an unsweetened granola i don't want any sweetener in it so we just made, uh, we only have a very limited amount of a toasted muesli because I was like, well, you know, you just have to, I'm, I'm just going to go all the way with nothing, but we've toasted it because we just really love mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. flavor of the roasted nuts, but there's no oil, there's no sweetener, there's no salt. 
and it really tastes delicious in yogurt. See, um, I, I think, so. I think, yeah, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head in yeah. some ways for what I was asking, because again, it goes back to that idea of openness, right? The yeah. idea of, oh, customers feel comfortable to give you their yeah. input, mm -hmm. knowing that you are going to take that seriously, yeah. have, you know, have a go at it, enjoy the process, right. as you said, right. of developing something yeah. new in response. Yeah, we right? just recently made a nut-free granola, which for many years I was very against doing because we're all about nuts. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm terrified of, al of allergens. But so many people at the farmer mar farmer's markets in particular have said, well, I'm not allergic to nuts, I can't tolerate them anymore. So, you know, we thought, okay, well, you know, it clearly says on the back of the bag, made in the facility with nuts, but uh, we have a nut-free version. We also do a, a gluten-free line that, you know, we're in a, in a facility that has gluten, but um, my sister and I are both uh, uh, gluten-free, and so I'm really a fanatic about, you know, the kitchen is absolutely clean, mm -hmm. and I do all of our gluten-free work before anything else is done. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and I am vegan, and I always and find my <laughs> vegan stuff. Yeah, but so. I'm, I, I will, in talking about the granola, what are those things that I'd like to get that has granola and chocolate? Is a brownie or Oh, the um, hazelnut cacao bars. Oh, my yes. God, that's amazing. So, right. <laughs> vegan. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so, so in, initially when we opened, back to sort of the, the menu and the food, yeah. we had a very limited menu. It was more like bowls, you know, a yogurt bowl or a smoothie bowl with our granola and fresh fruit. Mm -hmm. And we made, you know, we make a jam bar that's really delicious that has our original granola on it. We make a, a vegan um, hazelnut cacao bar. So it's a, a bar that then has our granola on it. So we try to, where we can incorporate our granola into some of the baking. Um, I make a really lovely cheesecake. It's a classic sour che cheese cheesecake, but I use our granola as the base. So, you know, it's, it's gluten-free and and it's a nice cheesecake. <laughs> but you know, as I'm listening to, to you describing how you create, it's exactly when if I describe how I create my paintings, I would probably describe it in, in painterly ways, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's in exact same ways. And that's why it always yeah. attracted me to be in conversation with Emily and Sarah, because we understand each other's processes. So yeah. when, I, when, oh, when the painters come, they're familiar with a creative person because mm -hmm. they are created themselves. So the way in which they create the food, the menu, and the business, I mean, granola is part of it. But certainly, yeah. they're always, the drinks are amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, what is the last thing that, last thing I love, the maca something? Oh my oh, God. Okay, <laughs> we, we're not, we're not going to go through well, all, only all because, the menu. <laughs> only because that's exactly what happens when I, 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 I am faced in, with a white canvas. Mm -hmm. And I have the yeah. trepidation. Would it work with a map? But then once I get into the flow of it, the images show up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's the same exact process. And so I think that's why this business is so successful. The atmosphere has that flavor. Their customer service, everybody, their employees, uh, it, it, people love coming here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also the fact that they like to collaborate with the businesses around. Uh, we do like to collaborate. I mean, some, we've had a couple of evening events and we've, um, you know, I've said we've got Prep Neighborhood Kitchen across the street and we would, you know, partner with them and they would make foods you could order across the street and, and bring it over here. Mm -hmm. uh, we do make a couple of cookies. We don't always have cookies, but our cookies would be strictly vegan or gluten-free. And if somebody wants another cookie, I'll tell them to go across the street to cookie time because they have fantastic cookies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we, we, during the pandemic, when we uh, closed down, you know, we, we really didn't know what was going to happen. But when we, and, and, and it was our, all of our customers started ordering granola, which was amazing. And Emily and I did all the baking in the kitchen and you know packaging and shipping out granola and then we eventually started people could do pickups and we mm -hmm. they'd come in and you know we just have a table inside the door but when we started about reopening the cafe a lot of people always said they wanted egg sandwiches and why don't you have egg sandwiches so we got a little grill and we started making egg sandwiches to go and now our um so the egg sandwiches have nothing to do with granola or anything mm -hmm. but in there, I'd say our um, my niece Sammy, who's Emily's daughter, really took the lead. She basically runs the kitchen, and 
uh, with her staff really was cr were creative in making um, egg sandwiches. Mm -hmm. um, we do everything house made, you know, so we make, um, because we make with the granola fig bites, which are these amazing little kind of like energy bites of figs and almonds and stuff. We always get figs. She started making a fig jam, you know, so they, there's a sandwich with fig jam on it and we so do things, pickled red again, onions. It's all and a so very it's all, organic process yeah, of kind of paying yeah. attention interacting with others make, yeah. being being willing to have things evolve yeah. right in front of your eyes in a sense that, and that's another thing is the, is the family oriented is a lot of their family members hover around here to help when to work and uh, and it's a pleasure because that really comes across to mm -hmm. the customers mm -hmm. and to the people around that that understand that this is they're family oriented, whether you're family or not. Mm -hmm. Well, Emily's one of Emily's older daughters, Kayla, um, actually opened the cafe with us. She was, um, it was after she'd gotten out of college and she hadn't gone back to grad school yet. And she's in, in environmental sciences, but she's a very talented artist. And she did all of our labels. Mm -hmm. And she did the first menu. Um, we don't really have our logo so displayed, but she's done our, our roasted granola labels and most of the labels on our granolas and all of our treats. And so, yeah, so she's... Yeah, very, very much of a family atmosphere yeah. here, yeah. <laughs> I've got to say, in general. Really? People oh, we feel can, comfortable we, staying Yeah, we hire a, a lot of young and, young people, mm -hmm. and in some ways, we some of them call us... You know, they're second mothers. <laughs> Not surprising. Yeah. I, I want to actually change our focus. We only have about five minutes left in the conversation. It's going yeah. by fast, right? Yeah. It always does. I do want to change our focus to this current exhibit that is yeah. here because people will always, as Lydia mentioned before, in conjunction with ACAC and Art Links, et cetera, you've got rotating exhibits mm -hmm. through here every couple of months, two, three months. Yeah. And I know that there will be a new one. Uh, uh, starting in June, June I think, yeah. Black mm -hmm. Joy Project. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, we'll, we can talk maybe a little bit about that, um, but just even what, what's on the walls right here? Well, Suzanne Menon is our artist, and we have expanded our Arlings membership to surrounding towns. So Suzanne is actually from Medford, but she is an Arlings <gasps> member. No, she's an Arlings no, member. And uh, uh, what the quality is, she's an oil painter, which is so unusual because as an oil painter, she does plein air painting, which means that it's sort of like the idea of the plein air is the impressionist painting, and they basically never doing anything in, indoors. And I was just fascinated by the fact that all this art is done on site. Yeah. So uh, he has been very successful. I look around and I say, oh my God, two more paintings are gone. So uh, people like that. They like the freshness. And I have to tell you, for an oil painter to do plein air painting is really not normally thought of. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the images, they're just so fresh and they have the quality of oil, but they also have the quality of here and now. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, we have a three and, and her run ends, and she had an opening a couple of weeks ago. Um, Can she, I interject one thing? One thing that's really, Suzanne gave a lovely talk a few weeks ago, but one thing that's so nice, we get a lot of artists who's the first time they've had an exhibit. Yes. And they often come here with their friends or family and they're having coffee or something to eat. And they are just, so amazed sitting here and just being surrounded by their artwork. Mm -hmm. And um, and the other thing that's nice about having, I think, having artwork in a cafe for several months is, you know, a lot of people aren't going to come in and just say, oh, I love that painting mm -hmm. and buy it. Right, right. They the come first, here right. several times right. and that painting grows on them and then that's a great point. and then and then they buy it. You know, mm -hmm. so it's 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 a it's a really nice. Mm -hmm. It's really it's so special yeah, having all this art on the walls. Yeah, again, yeah. just. Yeah. Kind of the, the the syncretism of like just the the fact that this works well. It works yeah. well for you. It works well for the business. One hopes it works well for the artist. It works yeah. well for the community. Mm -hmm. This really what we're yeah. kind of here celebrating today yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. How you know whether you meant it or not, roasted yeah. granola has become in this part of Arlington for yeah. sure. Perhaps throughout the town, you know, really a kind of engine of yeah. this type of creativity and community building. Yeah. It's so yeah. well done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lydia, we, are, we have just a couple of minutes left. Anything else that you want to add? 
Um, one of the things that I also think I like about uh, the Rosso Granola is the fact that, again, they really foster inclusion and at all levels, not just the, at the um, emerging artist, uh, people who need volunteer work. I mean, it's just, you wouldn't believe the, the amount of people that they attract that they don't really care if they get paid or not. They just love to be in this atmosphere. So to that level, we have the next exhibit is going to be the Black Joy Project, which is a project of, uh, along with ACAC and our public arts coordinator, uh, is, is basically to demonstrate. And also DEI, right? Yes, uh, the Department of Equity. Diversity, sorry, equity, and, and inclusion. inclusion. Yeah, in town. Uh, mm -hmm. it, is, it is a town and it's an art, the mm -hmm. Arts Commission. And um, the rest of Granola, again, is to show all these this things that we aim to have more people of all races, whatever they are. And uh, as I said, uh, Sarah loves to attract emerging artists, artists that, that just began, artists that had stuff in their basement and they haven't shown in a while. So that is important to us. And, and to me, as, an, um, as a commissioner and as an Arlings, uh, founder is very important to me because my mandate has to be to find places where art can flourish. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have the Black uh, Joy Project uh, from um, I say what I say June mm -hmm. through August, and then September, October, and November mm -hmm. we have another group. We always put call, calls for art, and after that we have the third holiday artist market, which I'm so excited, along mm -hmm. with the window painting that happens. We have a spring festival coming up uh, June 10th. Yeah. For, so for the holiday market, we started that on the on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And right. every Saturday afternoon, we have when the cafe closes at 2, the coffee house is open and we have, you know, like three or four vendors in here. Right. And right. It's, been, it's been really That's successful. Just People so love much it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> The feedback that I get yeah. because we send a survey is just terrific. They love the people here. They love the public. People that want to come already have a waiting list. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm very grateful that they give me all this freedom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we've, we, I mean, we've loved partnering with, with you and ArtLinks. Thank it's, you. It's really been amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you both for this conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, again, want to thank you and Emily for just creating this space thank and, you. and maintaining it. That means it. a lot important, to us. It's yeah. important to this part of Arlington and important yeah. to the town. Thank no you doubt very much. about it. So really yeah. appreciate it. Uh, I've been speaking with Sarah Short, one of the two uh, owners of Roasted Granola, and with Lydia kenick who is, uh, as I've already mentioned, an artist in her own right, as well as a clear patron of the arts around here. Um, so thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And we also thank, thank you. you for your time. This has been uh, Talk of the Town. I'm James Milan. We'll see you next time.